Hey guys, I wanted to talk a little bit about a documentary that we watched today. It's called The Planet of Humans and it's uh, directed by Jeff Gibbs and the executive producer is Michael Moore. Uh, we watched it today because a friend recommended it to us and he said that he was disheart disheartened by it. So we were curious, you know, since we work in the environmental business, we run a vegan hostel, we're vegan activists, uh, we run ecological tours. Uh, so we wanted to know a little bit more about what he had to say about the whole movement and of course we know that a lot of greenwashing goes on, you know, it is part of uh, what happens in the world but to the, ex the extent of the greenwashing uh, that was uh, made plain in this, in, this, in this film, it was shocking and stunning. It's not information that we did not know before, it's just something that was very curious. So I want to break it down a little bit and go into some of the details about what he was saying and what the truth behind it might be. Uh, the director talks about many forms of energy and the kind of greenwashing that goes on around them. So one of the main ones he talks about is solar energy. So solar energy is one of those kinds of energy that powers all life on earth. So basically the sun shines down for millennia, trees use this, trees and plants use this energy to photo photosynthesize, produce sugars. These sugars are then converted uh, into food that's used by animals and eventually, like over millions and millions of years, this energy gets converted into crude oil, into natural gas, into coal and various other forms that we burn today. So the problem is basically that the human population has gone up astronomically and we're using energy quite a lot in our daily lives. So this high intensity of energy usage is one of the prim primary issues that this documentary deals with. So that's the conclusion that you take away. But solar energy, they talk about heliostats, they talk about solar photovoltaics, uh, and they talk about large-scale projects, right? And when we talk about large-scale projects, we really need to talk about the life cycle cost of these projects. Where do the raw materials come from? How much energy is used in the creation of these products? And then we look at the entire lifespan of a product. So say if the lifespan of your average solar panel is 20 years, then how much energy, how much carbon savings will you get over this period? So it has a great deal to do with where your conventional source of energy comes from. For example, if your energy is coming from hydroelectricity, which is already quite renewable uh, instead of coal, then your energy saving by switching from hydro to solar it might be negative or might be partially positive. Another reason to go solar could be to simply go off the grid. So a lot of us like to uh, live away from the rest of civilization. That could be one point. The second point is that if you're in a country where electricity is unpredictable, like India, especially in the villages, then you might want to just put solar panels and have a continuous source of electricity when you can. Use a battery to store it. So these kind of solutions work on a small scale for a single house or a single building. But it becomes way more complicated on a large scale. And that's where we see huge issues coming in. Right? So the second point I want to talk about is wind. Uh, you must have seen these gigantic wind turbines. They're not present in every country, but most countries have them. So the, in the creation of these gigantic wind turbines, a huge amount of energy is used. These are massive structures that either stick out of the ocean or are uh, in barren pieces of land. Not only do they disturb the movement of birds, but they also create noise. So they give this continuous background humming noise and also their lifespan is not that long. So unlike solar panels, there's a continuous wear and tear on the turbines and the generator inside and over time it could break down requiring maintenance which might cause extra work for people and also extra use of parts and they are also extremely carbon intensive to produce so we're going to talk about life cycle costing in a, f in a future video and we're going to go deeper into the production of these things and trying to work out the math you know and see if these actually make sense over a longer period of time uh, the third thing that they talk about a lot is about biomass so biomass is basically the sun shines down on trees, trees grow out of the ground, some trees grow for hundreds of years, some trees grow for less. And there is an ecologically sustainable way of using biomass, which is twigs and branches that fall down, 
you collect them, you use them as mulch for the soil, you put these twigs and leaves into a biogasifier and then it gets converted into say cooking fuel and you could probably run a family's cooking on the biomass produced by that family's garden which is a super cool way of doing it but when you look at these big corporations and how they deal with their usage of biomass uh, it's not at all sustainable they fell entire trees they fell entire forests they clear cut them just to produce uh, just to produce the biomass that they then burn for fuel which does not make any sense right so the biggest question is where is the money at who is paying for this uh, have large uh, crude oil corporations like Shell and Exxon and the others, have they just been sort of blindsiding us, you know? Have they been greenwashing us into believing that these are eco-friendly practices? So these are things that we need to think about a little bit more critically. Like I wouldn't go so far as to call them out and say that their efforts are uh, not valid. Uh, I think that they are at least having a slight change of heart, moving in the right direction, but maybe it's not to the extent that we would like uh, another thing that was highlighted in the documentary is the heavy use of natural gas instead of coal and also natural gas being used for, uh, to, for example, the heliostat that was built in America. Uh, natural gas was used to keep the molten salt molten overnight when the heliostat wasn't on so that the moment the sun's rays would start shining, the salt would be ready to get circulated. So, of course, now this, this heliostat has been decommissioned, it's not in use anymore, but the principle of using solar energy is beautiful. And I think we should all take away that we should experiment with these things in our own homes. Buy a solar cooker, put photovoltaics on your home. It does save you money and energy in the long run. Um, but what we don't want is large corporations uh, sort of giving us a narrative of how these how these things work another thing I found very interesting is uh, of course the whole electric car movement battery technology uh, I myself am the owner of a second-hand electric scooter it's a lovely scooter um, so when we talk about vehicles of course there's the creation of the vehicle body itself which uses a certain amount of carbon which is roughly the same over petrol vehicles electric vehicles the chassis use up the same amount of uh, material where it changes is the motors and the batteries right and when you talk about batteries especially lithium ion batteries these are heavy metals that are extremely difficult to mine and uh, when they are mined they cause a great deal of environmental damage that has to be reckoned with and of course if the whole world wishes to have a lithium ion battery pack in their home rather than just in their mobile phone it's a great deal of carbon that's emitted due to this energy storage so i feel that the director and the producers they definitely had an agenda while creating this they had a point to make but i don't feel that that point is to attack the renewable energy movement as a whole or the environmental movement as a whole i think it's just to shed light on some things that could be changed call out people who are bullshitting and give us ways in which we can do things better so uh, we're going to talk a lot more about sustainable energy on this channel so if you'd like to learn more you are welcome to join us we're going to be uploading fairly frequently so i'm super excited um, if you haven't watched the documentary please go on youtube and watch it it's free and uh, yeah like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for a lot more bye bye